All right guys, so for today's video, we're gonna be reviewing some of my earliest work when I first started out sneaker customizing. How it really got started for me was when I was in my second year of college, I saw a pair of Jordan 6s painted in the South Beach colorway done by El Cappy, and I saw that online being posted by all the sneaker blogs. I had always been a huge sneaker collector, and after I struck out on the LeBron South Beach 8s a few months earlier, I saw El Cappy do these, and I was like, man, I really would love to try and do a pair for myself. I had been involved in some painting classes in college, so I said, let me go ahead, grab a pair of Jordan 6s, and give this this a try. So as you can see here, this is the first photo ever taken of any shoe I ever painted. It was a pair of Jordan 6s modeled after the South Beach colorway. Absolutely nothing is in focus in this photo. It's absolutely terrible taking on my drafting table in college, but you got to start somewhere, right? So after I posted those on my social media, I actually got a few requests from multiple different people saying, hey, would you be able to do a pair for me and whatnot? So after that, I remember the very first order I got was somebody sent in a pair of Independence Day 5s to get painted in the South Beach colorway also. So here you can see them next to the pair of Jordan 6s that I did. If you take a look at the what was once patent leather, you can clearly see all the brush strokes. Absolutely terrible. Um, I included this snapback that I had that matched the South Beach set. Uh, the photo framing is terrible. I took it in a spare bedroom at my parents' house up against the closet. You can see there's paint cans in the background and Xbox. Uh, there's no composition of anything. So this is a rough start, but surprisingly enough, more people wanted more and more shoes done by me after this. So after that, I thought I might be onto something. So I decided to create this terrible little logo business flyer looking thing that I decided to include in the pictures to kind of brand it a certain way. So here we have a pair of Jordan 6s painted in the original net net colorway from the Yeezy Ones. Take a look at that sock liner. That is just oof, rough. I mean, that looks like a shaggy rug or something. I, you know, that must have been really rough. I wouldn't want to put my feet in there, but that's what happens when we tried painting a black sock liner into a light pink. That is just something that we would never try and do today. Also, if you just take a look at the line work, you take a look at where the panels meet one another. That's just something that you kind of take for granted or don't notice as much when you're first starting out. You're just looking to do the clean color swap, but you look at all the edges and whatnot and it is rough here, guys. All right, so throughout all this time, I'm still in college full time and I'm just doing this as a little bit of a side hustle. But then came summertime and I had just left an architecture internship and I had to decide what I wanted to do for a whole summer. Did I wanna go and get another internship? Did I wanna go and try and get a retail job or something? But I said, you know what? Let me try to put forth a full summer of customizing shoes and let's see what happens. So the first shoe that I did to kick off that summer was a Galaxy Jordan 6. So this is about as far back as I can look at my work and say that there was really potential in something that I made with these. There's definitely still a ton to be desired here as it definitely needs a lot of that little star effect that you get with a really cool splatter effect. And then I also really like how I included the magenta near the rear of the shoe. I think that's something that kind of gets taken for granted in a lot of people's galaxy work when they're trying to replicate the foams. They kind of just do a lot of blues and purples, but they neglect that magenta in the back. This was actually a time when I said, all right, you know what? I'm gonna be posting this work on social media. I need to get somebody who knows how to work a camera to take some pictures. So one of my friends from high school, I asked him if he could take some pictures of these. So a lot of all the other work that was done by me prior had just been taken with uh, an iPhone and some terrible Instagram filters, but these were actually shot with a DSLR. So that's why the quality was so much better in the pictures here. All right, these are uh, a head scratcher to say the least, these Atmos Jordan 6s. Um, this is a really cool colorway that I was super excited to do, but that cement print, guys. Wow. Cement print's tough, and Jordan 3s are my favorite Jordan, so you would think that I would want to take my time and do a cement print real, really well, and I had, at the time, thought that this was done well, but wow. That is some rough, squiggly lines right there, guys. Also, this is one of those pictures where I really look back and say, man, do I wish I had discovered Duller at this point. You look at this black leather panel at the rear and it's clearly shiny as day. Um, this really needed some Duller in that black paint that, you know, really would have gone a long way in these. So these are things that you discover over time, but you know, that's also kind of why we wanted to create this page so that, you know, we could give out a lot of these tips and tricks and help you avoid a lot of these mistakes that I made early on. 
All right guys, I'm not gonna lie. I thought I was on another level when I made these Jordan 1 lows in the Paris theme. This is one of the most coveted SB themes ever and I thought it would be super cool to translate it onto a Jordan 1 low, obviously because of how similar the silhouettes are and this color scheme is absolutely incredible. So I was super excited to give it a go. But if you actually take a look at any of this portrait work and whatnot, it's rough. The idea is there, but the work, it's rough. All right, so now I wanted to take the time to go ahead and match some of my old work and put it up against some of my new work. And let's talk about a lot of the differences and how I've grown over time. So with this first one, we're just gonna talk about how composition can greatly affect your photos. So with this South Beach Miami Vice sketch dunk, we have it up against a clean gray background to have it really standing out that sketch look to make you kind of wonder what you're looking at. It really goes a long way in telling the story. Whereas with these Jordan 5s and 6s, they're just placed on a carpet floor up against the closet next to a hat. They're just kind of at these odd angles that don't really help tell the story at all. There's also paint cans in the background and it's just a dirty, messy look that that's not how you wanna prove that you're selling a premium product. So here we go from painting Yeezy colorways on Jordans all the way into painting on Yeezys many years later. Whereas in the beginning, I wasn't even able to really nail down a simple color swap without it looking really sloppy, brush strokes everywhere. Whereas, you know, five years later, I was able to nail down some character work on top of black prime knit on these Yeezys. That's definitely not something I would have been able to do without all these years of experience, trial and error, and a lot of time and effort put in between. So with some galaxy work, you notice how there's no real depth in the initial photo, there's no real black, there's definitely not enough contrast. And then here we have an entire Star Wars cleat. I was actually approached by EA to create a Star Wars themed cleat to help celebrate the release of Battlefront 2. So the fact that they trusted me enough to create some artwork to help celebrate the release of this game after all these years clearly shows how far my galaxy print has come. These really have that space effect and you really feel like you're kind of looking at this battle scene. So roughly about two years after doing the original Atmos 6s that I did, I remember getting another order for them and I was super excited because I really knew that I could do the cement print so much better. So here you can tell on the right, the cement print is a million times cleaner. I finally discovered some duller for that back panel. We didn't go ahead and paint the back tab white. That's definitely not something that held up over time with the initial release, but you know, these are also things that you learn you can and can't do on shoes over time, of course. And last, we have a really good example of how I believe I kind of came into my own as an artist. So early on, I wanted to create this Paris Jordan 1 low, and I really wanted them to almost be a replica as close as I could to the Nike SBs. Of course, at that time, I just wasn't talented enough or had enough practice to really nail down all those portraits and stuff. But many years later, I love that color palette and how it looked up against that silhouette. So I said, you know what? I want to try this on my own Jordan 1 and add a little bit of an abstract theme to it and then throw some floral print on top. So this is how I was able to take another artist's work and add my own spin to it while still really keeping that color palette and that theme all together. This is one of my all time favorite shoes. All right guys, so we hope you enjoyed today's video. This video was all about just showing you guys no matter your craft, everybody starts somewhere and to just give me a really good roast session to also help prove to you guys how far i've come over the years everything in this business has definitely grown a ton over the years the cleanliness of the product the overall presentation the photography the videography thanks to jason there's been so many people involved over the years in helping this business grow and thank you guys for following along for this journey go ahead give this video a like make sure you're subscribed to the page and we will see you guys in the next one